I invite you to stand if you are able to do so in honor of the reading of the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson today comes from Mark. Mark 13 verses 24 through 37. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Let's pray together, shall we? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Yay. It is our New Year, our church New Year, that is. And uh, we uh, celebrate that every year with our first Sunday of Advent. So we're glad you're here to worship with us today. Uh, it is going to be um, a good year. It's going to be a good year. We proclaim that now. Uh, let me let me ask you a question to start us off this morning. Let me just ask you a good question. Uh, what are some phrases that you can think of that our parents say to us to keep us uh, to keep us uh, the way we should be, especially when we are child, when we are children. Sorry about that. When we are children, what are some of those phrases that our parents say to us? Eat your veggies. That's one. Do your homework. Be kind. Say you're sorry. Say please and thank you. What are some of the ones that you came up with? What? Do you remember your parents saying to you or what did you say to your children or what have you heard uh, said to children around you? Uh, I have one more. I have more than that. I can name a lot more, uh, but, but just one more for us today. And maybe this is one that you had already said, clean your room, clean your room. <laughs> Why? Why do we ask them to clean their rooms? <laughs> Why did my parents ask me to clean my room? Well, we can answer logically, can't we? General hygiene, of course. Don't want them to live in their own filth, right? <laughs> uh, that's a little phrase that I've heard before and I've used before, by the way. Um, how about this? A sense of peace or organization, etc. We can keep on going on. One of the big reasons that it is said in our home and was told to me is this, we're getting ready for company, so clean up your room. So clean up your room. Of course, you know that there's a very good comeback for that, which you have heard and probably have said uh, times in the past, which is, why can't we just shut the door? <laughs> why can't we just shut the door? Yeah, we understand. Let's get ready for company. Well, today we begin a new series, a new sermon series, that is, and it's entitled Companies Coming. It's just for the season of Advent uh, and then also for Christmas Eve. 
companies coming, companies coming. Today's sermon especially is entitled, This Place is a Mess. <laughs> This place is a mess. Maybe that's another thing we've said as parents or you've heard parents say before. Uh, it, so here, let me just share with you too a few of the other titles. I think you'll enjoy these. Uh, this place is a mess. Uh, next week is Clean Up Crew. The week after is Deck the Halls. And Waiting on the Threshold is the week after. And then finally for Christmas Eve, Welcoming the Guest. Welcoming the Guest. Especially welcoming the guest to our hearts. So uh, we have some uh, some really neat things to look at, great scriptures to look at over the next few weeks together. We already know, don't we, that Advent is the season of waiting. Advent is the season of waiting, the church year that we wait. We anticipate the birth of Jesus. It's not long, thank goodness. We don't enjoy waiting, most of us. I'm not sure uh, if any of us would actually say that waiting is their favorite thing to do, uh, but it's only four weeks. It's only a, a four-week season of the church year, and I will say that if you weren't uh, good at waiting, we've had a lot of practice this year, haven't we? We've had a lot of practice waiting, waiting for health orders to be over, waiting till we could be back together in church, waiting, waiting to see our families and our friends, waiting for a vaccine, waiting. Boy, we've gotten really familiar with that word this year, really not in a great way, but our patience has been tried. We've understood in a deeper, much more significant way, maybe than we ever had, what it means to wait in this last year. And in our waiting, especially in our waiting for the Christ child to come, we reflect. We don't just, during the season of Advent, anticipate, which is what we do. We look ahead. And we look forward to what is to come. But part of waiting is also reflection. Uh, we think about what has gone before uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, sometimes so we can course correct. And sometimes um, so we can lament, so we can mourn what has gone before. We can remember, be thankful but also uh, we can we can allow ourselves to experience sorrow over what has has occurred i would definitely classify so much of this year in that uh, part of that when i reflect back on this last year there is much sorrow over what we have experienced um, really not even with covid um, though with covid as well but just so much in this world has been challenging over the last year and there is much to lament no doubt about it and that's part of our reflection as we look back but the good news is advent is not only looking back and reflecting it's also turning our face towards what is to come with great anticipation in the isaiah text that we heard this morning that we read um, earlier in the service, the people of God were in exile. In this text, the foundations of their nation had been shaken. The comforts that they had begun to take for granted were taken from them. Oh, Lord, that you would come. Oh, Lord, that you would change this, they cry. The human institutions that they had constructed no longer held the securities that they had begun to take for granted. They looked back. That sounds a little too familiar, doesn't it? It looks and sounds familiar. But they looked back, but they also looked forward at the same time, crying out for salvation, crying out to God for help. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, oh God crying out for something to change. 
What is it that we cry out for during the season of Advent? We wait for Jesus during this time. We need, we need an encounter with Jesus. This is what we wait for. This is what we look towards. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, Isaiah cries on our behalf. Oh God, we know you are present. Our faith, our belief tells us you are here. But we need to know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Shake us up, oh God. Move inside of us so that we can be certain again. We've begun to wonder. We've begun to doubt. So do it again, Lord. Do it again. Allow us to encounter Jesus. Allow us to look towards that time. Advent is that season that we experience the complexity of both of those things, looking behind us, acknowledging what has happened. And the good and the bad. The good and the bad, it would be so easy to completely villainize 2020, wouldn't it? But there has been such good that has occurred even in this time. And there is such hardship all at the same time. It describes well the human condition for us, doesn't it? That even in the midst of our suffering, we can experience joy in anticipation for what is to come. So, so what are our instructions for Advent? What do we need to do? Uh, the house is a mess, right? This place is a mess. So what do we need to do to clean it up? I think you've already uh, discovered by now that we don't really mean a physical place necessarily, <laughs> though I would say that our house could use some spiffing up right now too. <laughs> but it's really more about ourselves, our own lives, our faith. So here are some instructions for us. We like sometimes, don't we, those solid instructions of what to do. So let's take a look at those things. The scripture says this, be aware right? Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's interesting. We say be aware, but the scripture also says beware. You don't know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey, the scripture tells us in verse 34, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, Keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. Or else he will find you asleep when he comes suddenly. Keep awake, it says. And what I say to you, the scripture says, and to say to all, keep awake. Now, we understand that that's not literal. Keep awake, right? But let's awaken our souls to the possibility. Let's awaken our souls and our hearts, our minds, to the possibility that hope is on the way. This is the Sunday of hope in the season of Advent, this first Sunday of Advent. Hope is on the way, friends. And that's such good, good news. Keep awake. So let me give you these steps. I'm going to give you some ideas of how you can prepare yourselves for Advent. Number one, which might seem um, exactly opposite of what the scripture says, but, but let me explain. Allow yourself to rest and reflect. Allow yourself to rest and reflect. In 2020... <laughs> I'm not going to suggest that you stay awake. I'm going to suggest this. Take a nap. Rest. Hear these words right here. Learn Sabbath. The solitude that isn't loneliness. Learn Sabbath. The solitude that isn't loneliness. 
allow yourself to rest and to reflect. In that way, you awaken your soul. Allow yourself to rest. Number two, that was number one. Number two, how do you ask yourself this question? How do you connect with your faith again? Ask that question. When was it that your faith came alive? That you had that presence of Christ that you knew? That presence of Christ, it doesn't have to be a feeling. Uh, as a matter of fact, often it's not a feeling. It's just that sense that this is what I've chosen and this is what I follow. This is whom I follow. What was it? Think back on that. And then try to discover what will help you sense the Savior again. What will help you sense the Savior again? I'm going to give you some suggestions. So I, I told you two things right there. Allow yourself to rest and reflect. And number two, ask yourself the question, what must I do to reconnect with my faith again? How will I sense the Savior again? To do that, you may reread scriptures that were so connecting for you and familiar. If you're looking for something to read just now during the season of Advent, the story of Luke is certainly the one that we use the most uh, in the story of the birth of Jesus, and so that's always a good one. Um, the book of Acts is good as well. Uh, those are some really good, just basic uh, scriptures you may want to start with if that's something you're really wanting to do this season of Advent, is to reread the scriptures. Reread favorite books that connected you with your faith. A Pilgrim's Progress uh, was one of mine. Um, and then there was also Hind's Feet on High Places uh, by an author named Hannah Harand, I believe. That was years and years ago. Uh, but I loved those books. And, uh, and I remember those books from my early faith formation time. Uh, yeah, so I, and I could name quite a few more. Uh, there's one that I will mention in just a few moments um, as well by Madeline Lingle. But, but find a favorite book that connected you with your faith. Listen to music that reminds you of your faith. A few years ago, I had someone reach out to me who was really struggling um, with a variety of things, but wanted very much to remember what it felt like when she first committed her life to Christ years and years ago. And we got to talking about how important Christian music was to her back in those days. And so um, I encouraged her to revisit those songs that meant so much to her that helped form her faith. And, um, and that was really exciting time for her and it was a reminder for me as well and I did the same thing and pulled out some music I hadn't listened to in years and it was like uh, meeting an old friend again and so I encourage you if there is something like that for you that will help you grow in your faith to do that explore nature God's creation make a list of things that you can do to be reflective give to others, find ways to reach out and love the world. Finally, put this on the list. Take a good nap to stay awake. Really? Yes, that's what I mean. Take a nap, rest, so you will be able to awaken your soul within you. Finally, I share with you this. Um, I, one of my favorite authors, especially during Christmas time, is Madeline Lengel. Madeline Lengel is famous for writing A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, I loved the book, very much so. And she wrote a book uh, entitled The Irrational Season. It's part of something called the Crosswicks Journals, if you're uh, trying to find it. Uh, it is just one of my favorites. And I am definitely going to revisit it, especially during this Advent. I, I need to reread this book. But she talks a couple of uh, in a couple of places she has a couple of quotes that i really want you to hear this morning as we embark upon this christian new year together this advent sunday 
This is a poem about the coming of Christ. It was no time to be born for a child. With the earth betrayed by war and hate, in a land in the crushing grip of Rome, honor and truth were trampled by scorn. Yet here did the Savior make his home. When is the time for love to be born? The inn is full on planet Earth, and by a comet the sky is torn. Yet love still takes the risk of birth. And then finally, this poem that has meant so much to me for so many years. It has filled my heart with great joy. Again, by Madeline Lengel from the same book. This is the irrational season when love blooms bright and wild. If Mary would have been filled with reason, there would have been no room for a child. It may seem to some unreasonable that we still have hope after all that we've been through, but we do. It is the irrational season and the child is coming to be born into our hearts again, into our lives again. So we look back, but we also look forward with great hope this irrational, rational year, a child will be born. So we will make our hearts ready. Let's prepare them to receive him once again. Amen. I invite you to share with me now as we affirm our faith together, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to hear these words in an attitude of prayer. O oh Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen.